Yeah, look, um, Matt's had a good solid block of training the last um, period of time coming back from his hip surgery at the end of the season. And um, I guess what's expected sometimes that there are some other parts of your body that may be a bit flared up. And at the moment, he's pulled up with some, some soreness in and around his groins, which we believe is to do with his hips. So um, at this stage, as you, as you can understand, it's a no-risk policy with that. So we'll give him a spell this weekend and hopefully uh, he's available for us next weekend. All goes to plan. Oh, absolutely, at this stage, yeah. Well, I mean, as I said, next week, if he pulls up well and he's, he's good to go, but he didn't train today and we don't want to risk it going into a game 48, you know, a couple of days away, so. Oh, look, it's still a bit of water to go under the bridge before between now and round one, but we're hoping that they keep building. I mean, I saw dudes out there today and tails getting put through their paces and get some serious speed up and clocking some miles up, so that's a good sign. Um, whether that's, you know, round one ready um, and dependent on what they can get match fitness wise um, yeah not too sure yet just got to focus on what we can get out this week and next week and then we'll make a call after that yep oh look uh, that's to be expected with the times we're in at the moment to be honest so um, we're fine uh, fine with that uh, no travel I guess can be seen as a bonus for us um, in the sense that we're playing Port two weeks in a row um, is what it is. Um, it's about us just really getting our systems in place in prep for round one. So um, yes, it's going to be against the same opposition two weeks in a row, but we're more focused about what we're trying to do at the moment. So and sort and working through who uh, who's going to be our best fit for our system come round one. So and you know the rounds thereafter. So yeah, it's fine with us. Yeah, look, at, at the moment, I think we're leaning towards a squad of 25. So we're going to have a few guys rolling through the midfield as well as the other lines. So, um, look, that load will be shared between, you know, um, all the mids in there. And um, I can tell you, Jacko Haitley is going to get um, some minutes through the midfield. So that's pleasing for a guy that's come down from GWS and um, get some run through there. So that's probably some minutes that get made up with, with Jackson. Also, obviously, Sloaney, Laity, Keezy, and the guys that go through there as well. So, um, yeah. There's going to be enough guys going through there that um, making up the minutes won't won't be too hard for us. You mentioned the best fit. Do you have some indication of that? Is it still a work in progress given new coaching staff, new players coming in? Yeah, it's still uh, largely a work in progress. So we've sort of, if you asked each coach, and there's probably a, a different model, not different model, but different names here, there, and everywhere. So it's it is the next couple of weeks are really important for us as a coaching group and as a playing group to put their best foot forward in prep for round one. So um, while we've got, I reckon, 90% of it there, there's um, definitely still some spots up for grabs that will um, be determined over the next couple of weeks. You've played some pretty hot showdowns back in the day. It's bizarre playing two pre-season games. So yeah. Against it would have been bizarre, you know, probably even 12 months ago, but the last 12 months has taught us you just got to go with the flow and... You can't control too much with, with COVID at the moment, so um, yeah, is what it is. We just get on with it. Do you expect that to bring, I mean, I'm sure the game will be played with great spirits, but do you expect it to be a little bit you know, nippier, but just a, a higher standard given there is, you know, a bit of pre existing history of the world? Oh, look, traditionally speaking, there's always been um, you know, that added bit of. Uh, I guess intensity to a, to a showdown game, whether it be pre-season or in-season, so I wouldn't expect anything different this weekend. Um, in saying that, I know Port Adelaide, Port Adelaide will be focused on what they're doing this weekend, as will we, which would be probably different to what you're doing in-season. But um, yes, a good challenge for us because we know what a quality outfit Port Adelaide have been over the last couple of years and they're definitely one of the informed team comps based on last year, so uh, a huge test for our group. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's got a unique skill set in the sense that for a guy his size, he can run you know, at the top end. So that's um, something we can definitely u utilise in the wing at stages, I dare say. And it was actually the first one of the first cracks he's had at it last weekend, just for a little taste for him, which was, which was pleasing. And he enjoyed it for a big guy to get up the ground and be amongst the action for, for, for a period of time he enjoyed. Um, in saying that, too, he's, you know, he's also a key forward and, and will potentially be able to pinch it in the ruck for us, too. So that's... Um, that's pleasing and he's just a young kid at the moment along with the other young kids we've drafted in that just want to come in and, and learn and get better and put their best foot forward. So it's, um, it's been really exciting for those guys and for us.
Yeah, I mean, and even more interesting this year is that last year they really didn't have seasons, to be honest. Some of them played school footy. Um, Victorian leagues were all broken up in terms of what they were able to play. Um, so, and a number of our guys came off injuries. So they actually didn't have full seasons last year. So to be able to come in and have an impact off that limited build-up um, and show us what they've shown has been really pleasing and you know, a testament to them, but also our recruiting as well. So hopefully it looks like they're going to be players for us for a long period of time, which should be ideal. Um, and yeah, looking forward to working with them moving forward because they just add a bit of, you know, youth to your system and uh, excitement to, to what we're about. And I, I know our fans will love seeing them play, all three of them, and the rest that we've got coming through as well beneath them. Not as yet. No, I believe that's going to be determined in the in the coming weeks leading into round one. Um, no, I won't comment on the leadership group, what it's going to look like. I know Dan Jackson's the man for that with Nixie. Um, but look, we've been really pleased with the development, particularly of some of our younger guys coming through. Um, and they showed some great leadership. I mean, I'll just give you an example in the off-season. Um, the condition they were able to come back in as a group because a lot of them chose not to go back to their home states, which I know Nixie's spoken, spoken about at length um, with you guys. But... Um, just them to be able to, to recognise that and, and lead themselves as young guys has been really pleasing and has allowed us as coaches to go into pre-season virtually play some match sim from the get-go, which, which we needed as a group and has helped you know, us new coaches come in to sort of get a feel for the players and what our system's about. So, um, yeah, I think we've got a, a good group of young guys coming through too that'll definitely um, push those, those older guys for hopefully leadership positions sooner rather than later. Who has sort of taken fancy during the pre-season? I don't like to name names, especially if, uh, if coaches think they play favourites this time. But I know there's, there's been a number of young guys that have been spoken about. Um, and you were saying last weekend, you know, Lockie Scholl and Chase Jones, I feel like have, have really put their best foot forward with the way that they've prepared themselves for the upcoming season. Um, I know guys up forward have, have been doing a great job under James Riley as well. Um, and Burns has been wrapped with the guys down back. So, um, well, I did name two blokes then. Uh, I love all my boys and, um, and all the players, so we'll make sure... Yeah, hopefully they get their opportunity come this weekend and the weeks coming and then round one you know, is one of 22 rounds to come so um, yeah, it's not the be all and end all but it certainly will help us fine tune the mix that we want. It'll definitely help us determine uh, the mix that we want going into round one so as I said there's, there's still some spots that are um, they're up for grabs, so to speak. So um, those guys that are given the opportunity need to make sure they make the most of it, and that'll help us as a as a match committee make those selections for next week and then into into round one. So playing 25 obviously won't happen round one, so it gives us a chance to to play those extra couple to, to give us a look at what round one might look like for us. Yeah, look, I, I think the players just want to play some. I mean, respectfully, they'd love the fans there, but they also just want to play another opposition. They've been against each other since, you know, December and want to get and test our system against, you know, quality outfit in Port Adelaide. So we, we get a chance to do that. Um, I know our fans can jump on the website and, and watch the live stream, so I'm sure they'll do that um, and be there with us in spirit. But uh, the boys are just looking forward to playing footy. Um, struggled a bit last year. Nixie said, you know, that was largely about playing beautiful roles that weren't quite How do you feel he's going at the moment? Yeah, he's one of those young guys that oh, I love working with. Um, they are receptive to anything you give them as a coach. Um, they want to put their you know, heads down, bum up and get to work and get the best out of themselves. And they also want to lead the, the next ones coming through. So for me, there's probably four or, four or five in that midfield mix that the young guys coming through, they're in that mould. And it... Um, it really helps, you know, your older guys, but also um, young guys' development. So he's been in that in that vein with those guys, and looking forward to seeing what this this season presents for him. Uh, we've got a lot of young guys, so that doesn't mean that they're going to be, you know, up every week. Um, but we're certainly going to do our best to make sure that's that's more often than not. Just one last one, Harry Schomburg. A lot of fans love seeing him kind of burst in last year. Looks like his body shape has changed. He's kind of, you know, he's trimmed, but he's also like put on some muscle as well. Yep. Must be good seeing a young kid like him really grow into himself on the track and, and be having a crack 
Yeah, look, and that's that's a bit of the off season I spoke about, but also maturity. I mean, he's he's growing into his body, and he's now understanding what it takes to to play and train at AFL level. And no no surprise, his physique's changing as a result. He's also got a fresh new haircut today, so check that out uh, over the weekend. He's um, but yeah, he's a ripper. Uh, love coaching him, and um, yeah, we've got a lot of young guys in that mould. So um, hopefully, um, over the coming weeks, our fans get to see what our brand's about and a few of the young talent we've got coming through. Should be pleasing for them. Just one last one. Um, Duda and, and um, Carly are out. Who pulls that hold defensively? It feels like it's a pretty big hold to feel. Yeah, look, um, and to be honest, they haven't had those two out there for the vast majority of pre-season. So that's meant uh, a number of young guys have probably ca- played those key positions. In, um, what am I thinking now off the top of my head? I'm thinking uh, Fisher mackesy has been down there playing. There's been James Borlase has been... Um, Nick Murray as well running around out there so there's been guys that have played had to play in those positions because we haven't had the, the tools there and, and probably a Jake Kelly's had to play taller than what he normally would but we're lucky that he's got the versatility to be able to play tall and small so um, yeah that's a bit of a challenge we've got at the moment but um, we've trained up some guys that can certainly um, play those roles for us. Yep. Yeah, we'll have to find out if we need to use them. So that's why we've put the work into them over pre-season. But um, yeah, we'll just wait and see what that, that what pans out in that space. We're still a you know a few weeks away from round one, um, but um, it doesn't ever come down to an individual. It comes down to our system and how we go about it. So um, we'll just wait and see how that unfolds over the coming weeks.